Good evening. Welcome to the June edition of Your Questions Answered. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. I'm Joe, KD9CJX. And I'm Travis, W9HDG. And this is not Hollywood Squares, is it? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Which one of us is going to be the flamboyant one? <laughs> oh, we oh need a, my we need a, God. We need a Paul Lind right in the know. middle. I, well, I, I'm <laughs> just wondering if my cell connection is going to hold out for this. <laughs> Travis has been so gracious to join us today because we're going to talk about field day. Um, at the uh, bottom of the hour here at about around 7.30 Central Time. And um, he is at an undisclosed location somewhere deep, deep dark in the uh, Shawamigan Nicolay National Forest. Which... Not far yes. from a, a unnamed former Navy project site. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, um, but, uh, oh no, Joe, your mic is going crazy again. Let me see uh, am I back? Yeah, you were excellent. There we go. Yeah. Oh, All right. I pushed the button. My bad. Okay. Yeah, we were getting. Yeah, we had the stadium effect going. So I know we've had that happen. We had that happen last time. But um, let's yeah, get so we're ready gonna... to rumble. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about field day today. Um, it's the largest uh, amateur radio on air event. So we're we're going to spend some time about chatting about that. Uh, we got some other fun things happening. Um, just to I'll give you a quick recap on my uh, hamvention um, uh, escapades and um, questions. Every if people has que have questions, uh, please drop them into the chat. Uh, we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. Um, we'll have a I know we usually have a full show, but we really want to try to do as many <laughs> of these uh, questions here. So um, let's see, we got a lot of people popping in. Um, our buddy Mike from uh, from across the river, and of course forty five from fourteen hundred miles away. So well, that was fourteen hundred uh, miles. It's got to be Texas. <laughs> close to that. Uh, Reed, I got Reed from West Virginia. Reed, it was a pleasure um, running into you at uh, at Hamvention. So glad you could join us. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Scott uh, from Maine. I uh, got another Mike. And uh, KF4 EOM from Mesa, Arizona. Um, and Alan checked, you know, he saw the videos from the from the Dayton Ham Fest. So it's, uh, we had, I, I, I was planning on three videos. All three of them have been released now. So um, they're out there. Check them out. Um, oops. Uh, John from the uh, VE Land. Brent, Brent is another familiar face. Um, thanks for our, um, uh, the chance to meet up with you at Hamvention. So, see so. one of the many that just walked right <laughs> into your campsite. No, no, no. Actually, Brent, we this was we wanted we wanted to get together because we've been chatting for months and months. I've been helping him get his station on the air, and um, yeah, so that was it was a real elaborate set up to try to <laughs> to try to meet him. Um, oh, so. okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you see some of the videos, like people just walk right into his campground site. Hey guys, oh, yeah. Christine's like, oh my god, I gotta put clothes on, and Michael just out there, you know, having an eyeball too. So, you know, I... oh, so Michael, now you know what it's like to be a campground host. People just walk onto your site and start talking to you. Oh yeah, oh absolutely, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say this is probably Christine's last hamvention. However, she did get the lightning detector, so. You know, she may, I know. She may I'm very out. jealous about that thing. I want it. <laughs> PY2 AIR. That's got to be Brazil, I believe. I think so, yes. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Scott wants to know where my beard is. Right. It's right so, here. It's right here. Yeah, that's not a beard. That's a rat tail. I keep it on the other side of my head. Right. Like ZZ Top, the guy named Dusty Beard doesn't have a beard, right? John from Ohio. All right, Dave from down hey, the road. Hey, Dave. So <laughs> Eric wants an update on using the screen in place of the radials. So um we can talk about that. Um I know Joe, you haven't had a chance to be on the area for quite some time. We were chatting pre-show about that. But yeah. um 
I've been using the screen a lot and it's been working really well. I, I, I took it with me to Hamvention and I'm kind of glad I did because it was um, at the, two of the campsites, I had the vertical set up and um, I used that, that window screen underneath my, um, either that quarter wave vertical or the Wolf River uh, Sporty 40 and um, had no problem uh, making a match, um, pulling in tons of contacts, uh, DX stations, the whole nine yards. Uh, when we were at the um, campground in Ohio, though, we ran, I ran a wire antenna because everybody else was running verticals. And um, it's kind of, you know, when you got about 100 hams in a concentrated spot all trying to get on the air, you want to try to be as different as possible to minimize the interference. So, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, um, if you haven't tried the window screen and uh, ground plane, it's, I, I don't know what to say. It, it works. And I've, I've been really... Um, and um, then it's been performing for me. I think you know, next it, time I go to town and find myself in a hardware store, I'm going to get one because that just looks like such a slick setup. And it would let me use my Wolf River coil out at camp at a quasi permanent installation. Right. Michael, have you been able to use it on the bigger coil, uh, their 80 meter coil? And if so, did that help with the bandwidth at all? Oh, good you question. know, that's a really good question. I have not. I've just used it on the Sporty 40. And um, I, I, I do think that there is a little bit, we do get a little bit more bandwidth on, on, four, on 40 meters with it, with the Sporty 40, because I've had no problem um, getting, you know, a good match in, the, in both the digital portion of the band and the phone portion that's, you know, mm -hmm. separated by, by how much. Usually what I do is for the digital portion is I got to have the whip all the way extended. And then when I want to go down the phone, I just drop it, oh, maybe about a half a section. Um, to, mm -hmm. to, so I do have to do a little bit of adjustment of the whip length in order to get a good match okay. between phone and the data. But, um, but that is a really, that's something that we should, we should probably see. And um, to try to compare between the two, if, if the band, you know, how much more the bandwidth increases, especially on, on mm -hmm. 80 meters. So. Right, because you think so. We we have a ground radio system to reduce uh, uh, ground resistance. Mm -hmm. Right, that's why we put it out there. So either some antennas only have a single counterpoise, sometimes have radials. If you get into broadcast situations, there's a whole grid that they can put out under an AM oh, tower. Yeah. Uh, the use to push off that. So the idea of this actually sounds more like a one of these these underground ground radio grids from mm -hmm. an AM broadcast station. And in theory, you know, it's just a big mat. It's almost like putting a big sheet of metal under it. Basically, right? in yeah, terms, yeah. In terms of resistivity between the, you know, any two points there, so that I mean, it really should be a great plane to push off of. Uh, but I would like to see the difference in bandwidth because, you know, when you, we work 80 meters, it's a very small bandwidth that uh, any antenna, even a full dipole, oh, yeah. at most is probably going to give you like 200 kilohertz. Yep. You know, so if you cut it at um, 38 or 3,900, you're probably good between 38 and 4, which is great for phone, but it's not good for the CW portion. So really is something we should look at is seeing where that 2 dB uh, bandwidth is and go from there. Yeah, I just made a note. Um, I'm going to go camping this weekend. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'll probably bring the screen with me, but um, I'll, I'll throw the um, Silver Bullet 1000 in my kit and see if we can take some take some measurements while we're out there this weekend. Um, and that's is that with the new 217-inch um, whip from uh, the guys over at Wolf River Coils? No, I still have the original 213-inch whip, but they okay. did come out. Yeah, it, it's a good point. They did come out with a new a new whip. Um, it's supposed to be a little bit more robust. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any video of it. Um, the sections are double crimped, so the so each individual section is a little bit longer, and uh, the top two sections on the original whip were were relatively short compared to the rest. Those two sections are longer are, are more uniform with the rest of the sections so they've been able to shrink the overall size of the whip just a little bit and then the base is is too it's, it's got that double crimp so it's a little bit more robust at the base so but um i need to order one of those because my big whip pulled apart the first time i went to use it mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm down I in think the same that'll... boat. My whip disappeared in Belize last year. Uh, it did not make the flight back. Everything else made it back, not the whip. <laughs> that's interesting. Nice. Yeah, that's um, so that that's yeah. We're talking about new th hamvention, new things, um, and the second new thing um, from the the Wolf River guys is their sporty their sporty forty coil itself. They added two more turns on it to just create a little bit more inductance. And what that means is that the core, the Sporty 40 now works better with the Chameleon 17-foot uh, whip. Uh, when, I, when I first tested the, the Sporty 40 with the Chameleon whip, the, the Chameleon was a little bit short than the 213-inch than the whip. So it, 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 it resonated slightly out of band. They've added a little bit more, you know, so they've, they've, they've give you more uh, wiggle room in the coil so that you can now get used that 17 foot whip uh, throughout the 40 meter band. And then consequently it, with the, with their 213 inch whip, you've got now even more, you know, more length to play with. So, so what are the Wolf River guys going to have the KB9 VBR back screen door ground plane system? <laughs> <laughs> You know, Roll it should, and forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have got. I don't know. Can you get like a big bulk roll of, of like a thousand feet of window screen? Oh, yeah. And I could. I, I kind of. I, I bet you can. <laughs> I used to work at a hardware Hold store. On, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably check it out on Amazon, but I will just go down to the local front of the hardware store and say, "Hey, can you just order me a whole roll? What would you charge?" And I'm sure they'd give you a heck of a deal. Uh, Thirty-six inch by a hundred foot roll, ninety bucks. Well, there you go. You can put go. it on. You could put it on one of those big holders, you know, like um, craft paper at, at the butcher shop. So <laughs> you need some window screen. <laughs> That's the only thing you got to have something that'll cut it quick and cut it even, right? That's the only thing you got to worry about. Uh, if you want, yeah. how about this, Michael? Bronze, seventy-two inch by a hundred feet, one thousand five hundred forty-five dollars. I wonder what the game 72 is off of that. Seventy-two inch. Oh wow. wow! By a hundred feet, bronze. Oh, wow. bronze! Holy bronze. smokes! I, bronze well, copper wire. I, I would say this: if you're going to do this for <laughs> um, for general purposes, <laughs> just get some cheap metal screen. You know, aluminum would probably be fine. You know, got to get bronze uh -huh. or copper because after about five or six or maybe ten activations, eventually it's going to get dinged, rolled up, and it's going to start to fray, and you're just going to go buy another one. So don't go spending a lot of money on the bronze. Yeah, that's yeah, the mine's... reason I read off the thirty-six by hundred first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's I've um oh I'm, oh I'm I'm out of focus. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the camera tracks the camera tracks my eyeballs so if i turn my head too much it loses it'll it'll lose focus isn't that crazy uh, <laughs> and me and travis um, we actually went to the same mind school believe it or not <laughs> uh, we did we did remember that pageant joe <laughs> <laughs> I must have used that window screen for eight or nine activations so far. It is getting a little bit frayed around the edges, but it's still holding up. So yeah. it's uh, the, a good question. The, so do you got any sharp edges on it? No. Okay. Not like not like hardware cloth that'll puncture your fingers when you try right, to right. do anything with it. But uh, no, I haven't had. Have you thought had, about I, putting holes in the corners to stake it down? I saw a couple people have, have suggested that to um you know grommets i heard one person was going to put a grommet right in the middle so they could put a ground the ground stake through it um duct tape around the edges you know it would be Ooh. um would be an option too you know You're right. would... i think though if you put anything around the edges rolling it up is going to be an issue right mm -hmm. yeah it would be it would be but so far i mean i, I paid like seven dollars for this screen um Plus the Perfect. Menards eleven percent discount. <laughs> Perfect. So just, you got just out of curiosity, in the mail. Yeah. yeah. So just out of curiosity, so you met uh, <laughs> Junie, the duck, the duck lady. Yes. Does she, yeah. does, she duck chicken, does she use chicken wire on hers, or what is she doing now? That's what a do, good what, question. Haha. <laughs> see, get it, chicken wire. And see, duck. Now we got to. Now we got to. Now we got to compare. 
Window screen versus chicken wire. Right. Well, the chicken wire is definitely heavier gauge. It's probably like an 18 gauge wire, and the um, screen is probably like 30 gauge. It's real thin. Mm-hmm. So right. I don't know. It's probably a horse apiece, really. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But, but I bet we are willing <laughs> to go Mythbusters on it if need be. I, I, well, I foresee that as a potential future collaborative project, Michael, when you find your way to this undisclosed location. Well, maybe I'll make a note. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll go to Fleet Farm on my way up to field day and um, I'll bring a roll of uh, I'll, I'll get a roll of chicken wire and uh, we can we can lay it out and uh, give it a give it a shot. So. Right. I, I think, honestly, I think it's all going to be pretty close. I mean, it may oh, yeah. be, no, it be too, a couple but still, errors one be way fun. or the other, but it's going to be interesting to see. And then you're mm-hmm. just using still the alligator clip to go from, the, go from ground to the screen, correct? You know, initially I was, but um, I'm not anymore. I'm just because my whole my whole base is metal. I've just mm-hmm. been setting. I've just been setting the base on top of the screen and not using the wire at all, and it hasn't made a difference. So really interesting. I initially used the wire because I didn't know if if everything was going to conduct through, mm-hmm. uh, but um, no, I've I I haven't I haven't t- taken the time to you know hook that wire up. So okay, um, we have had some people say that you know they've they've picked up aluminum screen and it's it's got the black powder coating on it to. Yeah. Um, to protect oh, it. Oh yeah. But so you're gonna so if you if, if all you've got available to you is that black screen, you are gonna have to um sand it, you know, get get yourself a nice, you know, just some kind of a shiny spot and then and then use use um an alligator clip to go from that to the to your base. It, and in case you're inquiring use, minds mm-hmm. obviously don't go use ahead. the nylon stuff or the you know the plastic stuff because there is that out there too. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> the fiberglass. Inquiring minds may want to know. I did look. Chicken wire is comparable price wise to the window screen. I thought for oh, sure there we chicken go. wire would be cheaper. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. They're probably all again. It's it's all going to be apples or I mean, apples to apples. It's really yes. Uh, I think regardless. So yes, the wire is closer in regards to the the mesh, but the chicken wire has got a thicker, uh, more. Um, uh, more surface area mm-hmm. per brand, so I think it probably balances out. Yeah, oh, I'm sure yep. it does. So, oh. absolutely. Um, you know, just kind of circling back, we were talking about the Wolf River. Uh, Brent asks, let's see if I can pop it up here. Um, Brent bought one of the new whips, uh, the new style whip with the double crimp. Seems like there was an oil on it. Now, what type of oil could you put on the whip to make it slide in and out smooth and not compromise? Um, probably, uh, maybe like, I don't know if, if a three-in-one oil would be light enough for that. Yeah, I honestly... I would think yeah, either a white, like a white lithium grease or just plain old WD-40. A white lithium, maybe a little dielectric grease. Yeah. yeah. The only... The only the only concern I have is that if you start to oil up the whip, the the oily oily surface will attract dust, and that is going to gunk things up over time. Yeah, and probably, there you. I, I don't know if I do even recommend oiling it. I mean, if it's if it starts to stick, that means something's bent. It's not mean that it's you know it's mm-hmm. not friction necessarily. Yeah, if it and yeah, you do want and, that uh, friction to keep it extended. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you get a little bit too much friction, you could try a little bit of um, um, polish, like, um, you know, just to ty- kind of remove that outer layer of oxidation, yeah. um, just like a polishing cloth or something like that. Something, something you know, not very abrasive, something super light um, should help, you know, too. 45 uh, bottles is not a good idea, though. A dry loop like you'd use in reloading. Yeah. Like, what do they use? Do you use, like, a little graphite powder, or what do they use? Yeah. Um, oh, a little leak getting here. Silicone spray, um, uh, no, dry lube. I don't, I don't think I do silicone. I mean, I think you got to yeah. do something. Um, I don't know, even know. I mean, dry lube seems like not a bad idea. I mean, because anything you spray on there liquid wise, it's just going to turn into a mess. I wouldn't use, I, 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 I'd rather choose dry lube over um, silicone spray because silicone spray is definitely going to gunk up. 
um, mm. over time. You know, yeah. it's 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 a good lubricant, but it 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 really likes to attract the dust. Right. So. So, or you know maybe soap to lubricate you know that's you know that's yeah, options I, too, so. I don't know if i'd really put anything liquid on it i mean yeah. if it's really that hard to get out then i think it's more along the lines it's no longer you know it's it's bent it's concentric something's wrong there mm -hmm. you know you got an egg you don't got a perfect circle yeah yeah so yeah i used yeah yeah some it does have the whip does have some sort of spray or grease. It's probably they probably coat it with something after manufacturing, just to Maybe keep it from. <laughs> Cosmoly, that's what I was gonna say. Oh my god! So, if any of you guys have ever experienced Cosmoly, just the worst planet. Well, I'm must be playing yeah. Up, but um, <laughs> I was very young. My first rifle was packed in Cosmoly. So what did I, because it was cheap, so what did I have to do? I had to strip the whole thing down <laughs> and remove the cosmoline, which, oh my. then you learn how to take care of it, right? Uh, That's they, right. The U.S. Army oh, used yeah. to pack layer Jeeps in a cosmoline, you know, and then put it in storage <laughs> because it won't rust that way, but oh, uh, it's terrible. It's, terrible. <laughs> it's, it's like a horrible stuff. Yeah, Pack an entire Vaseline Jeep on steroids, you know. Vaseline on steroids. <laughs> oh my lord! So, <laughs> had a couple questions here. I want to circle back to. <laughs> uh, Barrett says, when using headphones with the FT eight ninety one, is it normal to hear yourself when transmitting? It sounds like an off to lower my voice, quite distracting. What that probably is is um, the monitor setting. There's um, uh, not in the deep menu, but on that on on the front panel menu, um, if you press the function button, and then um, I don't know if it's on menu one, two, or three, but there should be a um, a little box that says M O N for monitor. That, I thought that was the the Jamaican button. Hey, mon. Mon, the mon button. <laughs> the mon button. So that would, yeah, exactly. It brings so, all the DX in for the Caribbean. Do you push that button? When you press, yeah, when the monitor is turned on, you will hear yourself in the headphones when you transmit. And it gets it it, it gets a little unnerving sometimes going because it's, it's distracting. just distracting. Like, it's it's just it's just um, a fraction of a second, you know, off. So it's uh, so that's probably what's happening is your monitor is turned on. So turn off the monitor and you won't hear yourself. Speaking of that, have you guys ever used a digital mode like um, P twenty five or uh, D Star or uh, um, Fusion? And like someone next to you's got a HT, and as you transmit, it's exactly a half second off. Have you guys <laughs> oh, yeah. ever heard that? It's weird. And then you start trying to have a conversation <laughs> with you and yourself, and you got to stop because your brain is having a hard time understanding. Why is it such a delay? Am I having a stroke? No, exactly. no. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, no, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So, uh, another increase, or another question here. Mike says, um, now that you know, we've been talking about the Wolf River coil. So, but now that you've been using the Wolf River coil extensively with your new window screen array, have you found any bands that has been hard to get a good SWR reading on? Not yet. Um, I think the majority of, of the bands I've used it on so far are uh, 40, 20, 15, and I, 17. I haven't had I haven't had a chance to get a get a good activation on 10 meters yet. Um, uh, but those, those four bands, I haven't, I haven't had any problems, uh, getting a good match, uh, with, you know, with, with the window screen. Right. And realistically, from what we found out with the 213 inch whip is that you can pretty much work 20 on up with just adju adjusting the length of the whip. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you have the sporty 40, that gives you 40. So, and if you put the little jumper in there, like we've shown in a previous video, you pretty yes. much got 40 through 10 with very little work. You don't even have to mess with the coil anymore. Like you used to with the silver bullets. Um, yep. 
so with the question that he asks is, is are any bands uh, you don't get a good swr and, and theoretically that's not possible because mm-hmm. you have it's actually a better ground plane um all you got to do is adjust the length of your whip or add the coil in um if you do have the silver bullets or the mini bullets I, is it called the mini bullets I think, it's I think the silver bullet mini, yeah, yeah. The the, 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 the one thousand is the big one, and the mini is the short one. Right. I mean, you really should have a problem with that. The question is: is eighty? Does it improve your bandwidth with eighty meters? Yeah, so that's something we really need to look into. So, uh-huh. someone, I don't know, maybe an electrician needs to get a couple long lengths of wire uh, cut to a fork <laughs> wing, and then we're going to figure. I this wonder. Out. If, I wonder if that electrician could, you know, actually do that. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe if you stop talking crap about him sometime, maybe he'd actually do it. <laughs> you must have me. But it, you must have me confused with Michael. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna shake it off, baby. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> Some ham is kind of stuck home during field day this year because their wife spent a lot of money on Taylor Swift tickets, okay? I'm not saying who, and I'm not saying it grinds my gears. I'm just saying. They're just saying. Oh, it grinds your saying. gears. Oh, they're ground smooth. Like, go find, like, a race car engine that's blowing up and go look at the journals and the bearings on them. They're gone. The gears are gone. They're gone. <laughs> what can I do? I'm married. <laughs> so if I go spend a thousand dollars on a new radio that lasts more than a three and a half hour long concert, I'm the one who's going to be a bad person, right? Yes, that is That's totally right. how that works, Joe. It, it really is actually. That is that is how it works. It's you've you've got that right. So, well, before we're almost at the bottom the of the guy. hour, so I thought I would, you know. Uh, just kind of finish up our talk on Hamvention. Um, I didn't really buy a lot of stuff. Um, I know some people really spent the big money, and I, I had a, I, I carried a good size wad of cash with me, like everybody else does. But um, really, I, I think the only, you know, the the big thing, the ARL antenna book. Oh, what year is that? Um, nineteen seventy-four. Hope we lost Travis. Okay. Oh, so. yeah. Well, we didn't lose much, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard, I heard his dog bark and then he went dark. So, yeah. um, Uh-oh. maybe the dog ate the uh, jet pack. We don't know. Yeah. So, okay. if you got a 74, I got like a early 60s or a late 50 one. It's a very similar cover to that, but it's blue. Okay. Um, and I've made antennas out of that. And, guys, let me tell you, the old antenna books, if you could pick them up for a couple bucks, do it. Yep. There are some. Yep really cool antenna designs back there and believe it or not they're all backwards compatible right (laughs) the only difference is is that a lot of these antennas don't use coax as much as we do nowadays so no but a lot of but it shows you how to make matching networks without using a ballon yeah so again do it. Your mind will be blowing. Your, your antenna game will be taken to a new level. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't know if Travis. I I, I probably should have. Are you there, oh, Travis? Oh. Or Travis? Maybe he's there. No, I. Well, no, he's muted. Maybe it's a bear. Okay. A were werewolf, maybe. I'm just gonna pull. I'm just gonna pull. I'll pull him out quickly. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll we'll drop him back in. Um, I, sooner or later. I got some parts for my hustler. I got that hustler vertical antenna, and I found Excellent. a couple of parts there. And I got these little guys from I don't know some dealer, but they're Power Works. They oh, okay. are. Um, I was going to put these in the trailer um, in the back. It's. Uh, so 12 volt, uh, of course I can't, uh, USB, you know, get some, I want to get some USB jacks oh, in the back of the trailer. Absolutely. Yeah. And then this one, and this is the same kind of format, but it's got a power pole connector. So, yeah, I actually have to go and I got to buy some of those. I got projects, Michael. I got, I got <laughs> video. I mean, 
I've actually started <laughs> shooting video. I haven't uploaded it to you yet. Uh, I got maybe a couple minutes here while we're waiting for Travis to get back. I got four videos I'm working on. This, like, this is going to surprise Michael because I haven't done a video in a long time either. I know. We were talking about like when's my last polar activation. It was yep. last October. It's been a while. It's a long while. So. Right. Um, but uh, stuff on the bench. I I do have a VTVM, vacuum tube voltmeter, that I want to talk about. Um, I also did some work on a duplexer uh, for you repeater guys. So if you want to learn how, a du- how to tune a duplexer, we're going to talk about that. We're Ooh. Talk about something we run into a lot of times when we have commercial duplexers. Uh, I do want to get a video out. I did get a couple of these radios. If I can get one out here without affecting the pile. Uh, these are Motorola's uh, XTL 1500s. Let me get it out that way. Okay. Uh, these are going to be going into some Go boxes that I'm working mm-hmm. on. Uh, nice thing about these, these are P25 and analog. Okay. Nice. Now, the P25 doesn't get a lot of use in the amateur band, except in central Wisconsin, where we have three ham repeaters that are P25 capable. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a lot of you people, a lot of you folks who also work with Aries mm-hmm. and public service uh, know that P25 is the de facto standard for most law enforcement nowadays. <laughs> so it's if you are going to be in a situation where there may be an Aries or possible Racy's activation, mm-hmm. you know a little bit about P25 and how exactly it very good digital mode. It's just not something that you're really going to see very many ham radios do unless you're buying commercial stuff and bringing it in. Yeah. Um, yep. It's Moto, Motorola's. Well, it's not a Motorola. It's mostly Motorola, but there's some other commercial uh, bands. Um, Kenwood commercial radios, Tate, mm-hmm. Um, uh, Bendix King, um, Harris, all produce P25 radios for law enforcement, for military, etc. Um, but you never really see it in the ham radios, or there isn't anything out there ham wise, other than yeah. I think the MMDVM module, if you're going to make a multi mode repeater, allows for P25 and linking. Yes, yes, it does. So, yeah, yeah. I, got, I got a lot of videos out there, and lo and behold. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Oh, hey, Travis. Travis is back. Hi, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I had a guest come up and say, hey, who can I call to have a dually, an inner dually tire changed? I was sitting in my motorhome and heard, <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> You're a long, you're a long ways from anyone with a tire, a tire jack. <laughs> so now I'm sitting here on Google while talking to you, fine gentlemen, and Joe, I'm being gracious. Um, doing, trying to remember the name of the place to put my refrigerator in. Oh, yeah. I, so was it two years ago, me and Michael came up to Black Lake? Yeah, and we yeah, you're in Black a half. Lake, We had a flat tire. And we drove, it was all we drove into, to any place that would do a, that could even change a tire. We, well, we ended we're up talking at, in an RV, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. Maybe in Hayward. Otherwise, Rhinelander, maybe. Mm-hmm. No, there was a place that I <laughs> found that. God, what was it? I don't remember. <laughs> Well, while Travis is doing that, it's probably the bottom yeah. of the hour. Time to talk about our sponsor. Yeah, we got the. What did you get, David? David asked, "How big of a piece of screen have you done a video on it?" I have done a video on it, and it's it's back in the archive, about four or five back. Um, if the the thumbnail says "magic carpet" on it, um, if you're if you're looking for it, um, standard size I bought at the home improvement store, thirty six inches by eighty four inches. I've seen some people use a screen that's a little bit smaller than that. Um, you can add more screen. So I, I, I don't think the size is, it, it's too, it's not too dependent on the size. Uh, it, if you can get somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 to 20 square feet of coverage seems to work really well. And um, if you want to add more screen, you can do that. That's supposed to give you even better um, coverage for the lower bands. If you can add more, more screen there. Yeah, I think three by five or three by six feet is probably going to be plenty for absolutely. Yeah. And up. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So, 
All right. And um, you're right, Joe. You know, it is uh, bottom of the hour. And uh, what that means is that uh, we just need to take a ta take a moment and um, acknowledge uh, the people that help keep the show on the road here. And that's our patrons over at patreon.com. Uh, I've got a lot of new uh, members this past month, and that's great at the supporter level is uh, David McClure and Ralph Duncan. Uh, thank you very much. And up from that, at our friends level, Dr. Norman Detweiler, Mike Nicholson, Donald Clayton Porter, David Potter, Ben Detwiller, and Andrew Warfield. Oh, and I really appreciate your support and all of these, all of our new patrons that came uh, forward in the month of May. It's um, really appreciative to that. Uh, uh, patrons help do things like, um, uh, closed captioning, you know, I, I try to get, um, as many of the videos as I can captioned and, um, that helps, uh, pay for that. Uh, that great music you, that you get in the videos, <laughs> uh, the other, the other types you of, pay of, for that music. Really? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta pay, you know, you know, you scratch the needle, you gotta scratch the back. So I guess. <laughs> oh, that's a heck of a scratch for that music, let me tell you that. And, of course, at our top tier, our associate producers, Bill, Andy Russell, Dave White, Brian Liebig, Chuck Dagod, Rand Gray, Joe Marhine, and Lyle. So thank you, our associate producers, uh, for keeping the lights on here. And you, too, can help. Uh, do that. That's over um, to support the mission to educate and inspire the amateur radio community at patreon.com slash KB9 VBR antennas. And uh, with that, I got a message from our sponsor. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com. All right, so uh, we got that out of the way, and um, uh, tractor supply. We must be talking about the window. Oh, yeah. So I think just about <laughs> any any home improvement store, local hardware yep. store, you're going to get it. it. It may just come in a lar larger roll. It's by the whole roll. I mean, not a hundred foot roll, but you know. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's. Bottom of the hour here, and um, that means it's time to go get oh. eaten by the mosquitoes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think you, I think you got to shut the door there. Oh. Uh, Travis is going going mobile on going us, mobile. so uh, <laughs> which is important because um, field day is coming up, and Gaping. like I said, field day is the um, you know the world's largest on air operating event. Always happens the fourth full weekend in June. And this year for field day, uh, we are going to be out in the um, Shawamigan Nicolay uh, National Happy Forest again. Did my refrigerator. Well, oh, you're going to be out there. I'm, I'm going to be out there. Maybe so. the dogs while my wife goes to the table. Winter. So um, I'm just going to be. Travis is talking with a person here, so we're just going to we're going to mute him for a second. Uh, so, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Don't so this is me. I'm back. Okay, so this is going to be our field. This is going to be our field day site for this year, isn't it, Travis? So, and it doesn't get any nicer than that. So. Well, it does, but the bugs need to go away. <laughs> Where is Agent Orange when you need it? Oh. Yeah. Dog. <laughs> you don't need to bark. All right. So, in the house. Um, Go on. get up there. Like I said, uh, field yeah, you know, field day is it's it it's one of my favorite operating events. I I really I really enjoy it. I've been a ham for twenty three years, and I think I've participated in at least twenty of 21, 20, 20, 21 field days. There's a couple I've missed for various reasons, but. Um, Hey, Michael, part. I think we need to take oh. donations as long as I'm out here, like 50 cents yeah. per mosquito bite. <laughs> All right, we're going to see how many welts Travis has at the end of the night here. 
<laughs> Travis might go I back in the fifty bucks if they pick you up and they drop you in the lake. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> You're right, 45. I might have to start a fire. <laughs> oh, big old smudge pots. And that's one of the problems, you know, with field day is uh, dealing with the bugs. And hopefully they won't be so bad the end of the month like they are now. I think a fresh brood just, Happy just hatched up there. Happy so. camper, yeah. Yeah, we better block Travis for a few minutes here, or else we're going to probably get something that we don't uh, <laughs> that we don't want to see. <laughs> He's going to take a shower. Camera. I might. You never know. <laughs> oh man, you can live, see the bugs on live from inside the toilet vault at Black Lake. No, it's there, radio live. <laughs> I just, they're I just they're um, they're swarming the camera. Them. You can see them on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> You're everywhere. You're everywhere. I think so, they've determined that the camera is probably an offender of some sort. <laughs> yeah, we're going to right. break out some bug spray here. Okay. So while, while Travis is getting loaded up there, um, I, I guess our, our general plans for field day is that... Um, you know, with the solar cycle improving, I, I think the key strategy is, is really going to be to focus on those upper bands. Uh, 20, 50, uh, 15 and 10 meters, I think, are going to be really hot this year. Mm -hmm. So especially the 15 meter band, we're going to see a lot of activities. So if you're going to be, um, at, you know, uh, if you're putting together a field day site, and um, if you've done field day in the past, you know, 20 and 40 meters can be an absolute zoo. Well, with the addition of the 15 meter band probably opening up it's for the weekend, it's going to give you um, a lot more opportunities to find an empty spot and um, call CQ. So. Right. Yeah. Um, last fall in November, October, November, I forget where it was, mm -hmm. uh, for CQ Worldwide's uh, sideband. 15 and 10 was wide open, and I was working Central Europe, Eastern Europe, Northern Africa on 15 and 10. There's mm -hmm. probably some there's probably some contacts I will make again. Um, so this is this is the year. Get out there, work the higher bands. Even if you're working from a park with just a Wolf River coil, you got the opportunity to make some really good contacts this year. Yep. And you're, you're and, and and speaking of DX too. Uh, consider this: if 10 meters opens up, uh, field day is open to all of Region Two, so that means that we can get those South American stations. Um, you know, Brazil, uh, Venezuela, um, Argentina. Those guys, those on 10, those guys will boom in on 10 meters. Oh yeah. So anytime that anytime 10 opens up, you really hear 10 meters. Um, our friend yeah. from down there, PY2. I'm just scrolling, scrolling back a little bit. Uh, PY2 AIR Alberto. Um, if you're on the air and uh, during field day, point the beam this way and we'll try mm -hmm. to get a contact with you, buddy. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, and I, I think, you know, in, in tenor wise, um, I don't know what, if, if people have any ideas, but, um, I've got a couple plans, so. I've got Probably. a couple of ideas. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm planning to do is um you know like i said i really want to focus on the 15 meter band and um we'll try to get a directional antenna put together in time for the event um 15 is it's I, it, it's it's short you know that the frequency the wavelength is small enough that you can put together a decent sized homebrew directional antenna without um, needing a whole lot of uh, real estate i found this article in uh, QST Magazine, the Black Widow, a portable 15 meter beam. Uh, it's made... <laughs> I don't know if that's a necessarily a good idea of call something a Black Widow and then put it up <laughs> over your head. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if it will, if the name alone will scare away the mosquitoes. It might. It's I mean, made bigger... out of. <laughs> yeah. We know what's yeah. grinding Travis's gears tonight, guys. <laughs> mosquitoes. <laughs> It's a relatively fresh hatch, and they are not afraid of DEET. Mm, they're hungry. It's been a long winter. Mm -hmm. so, this is, It's made out of a few. Um, the, so the supports are um, fishing rods. Uh, I don't know if they're fiberglass or carbon, carbon fiber fishing rods. Uh, 
crappy master uh fishing pole you three sections crappy master crappy master yeah, crappy crappy. Man. They're cra you crappy. buy them at walmart so they're crappy, crappy masters <laughs> you, it says you buy them at Walmart, so they're crappy masters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's about right. That, that'd be an off-brand crappy. I don't know. I, I think that's a Walmart brand, actually. You could get you, like a whole you, you know, kitchen utensils from Crappy Master. Crappy Master. Right. <laughs> Made in China. So... Um, so hopefully we can get something like that, on, <laughs> get that on the air. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, I think, uh, Travis, you gotta. <laughs> uh, I, I think other, um, options would be, you know, for a wire antenna, multi, of course we've used multi-band wire antennas like, um, uh, the off-center fed dipole. Um, the unfit half wave. I think we've had that up in, in, in previous field days. Uh, mm -hmm. I like something with a little bit of, um, you know, that that's going to have a little bit of gain or whatnot. So, right, right. Um, I, I think the fact that you're trying a directional antenna out on a field, an actual remote mm -hmm. location is a really unique thing. 15, 10 meters um, direction, uh, directionality, directivity. Um, is really a key and that's going to help you go to go the distance so um interesting to see this i want to see before you how you're going to get how are you going to get that there in the subaru michael i, I gotta know <laughs> Just well, we can strap it to the back of the trailer at the, on the roof of the trailer so, <laughs> so this reminds me of a good story uh, about a week or two ago in my hometown there was a farmer with a large piece of equipment driving down the main drag uh took out 23 mailboxes before he realized he was a little too far to the right <laughs> Uh, so if you're driving in the north woods of, of Wisconsin the Friday before field day and you hear a little thunk as a green Subaru <laughs> passes you, you know, the widow maker. The <laughs> widow maker window is rolled up or you might be a widow. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled Travis from the screen. He's camp hosting tonight, so yeah. we'll let him. We'll let him get um, take care of um, the the camper there, um, and we'll pull him back up in a second. So, um, power is always going to be is always a challenge out there. Uh, so I, I think it's we're looking at large batteries. Um, right. You said you were uh, looking at another hundred amp hour uh, light pole four. Yep, I'm going to pick up another. Um, well, I got, I got, I got somebody sending me a, a hundred amp hour battery. Hopefully, it's it 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 comes in time. Okay. So um, we'll have to do a review on it, but um, what a perfect place to review a battery then at uh, field day. So. And are you going to run FT8 off the battery? Yes. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's going to be my challenge is um, power, power consumption uh, with an extended FT8 session. Right. Well, in theory, you know, even though that it's field day and we're not supposed to be running more than 150 watts, right, fellas? Mm -hmm. You know, that. so if you're running 25 watts well, FT8, or are you going to run the full 50? You know, because you I don't think... usually run 100 watts when you're, when you're mobile or when you're portable. No, I've been usually running, when I'm portable, um, when I've been doing portable digital, I've been running either um, 20 or 30 watts, um, okay. not much more than that. So that's... I, I think if you get, you know, with those, with like that, with like that sporty 40, if you get, well, the, if you're using the quarter wave, um, you've got no problem. You know, you could, you could crank her up to a hundred. That's not going to cause an issue. Uh, but with the sporty 40, you probably, you really don't want to do more than 30, 40 Watts yeah. uh, digital, digital with it. Right. I, I, I would 30 or 40 uh, for a, uh, not very long. I think if you ran 30 or 40 watts all day on a field day with that, mm -hmm. you're going to melt that coil. Yeah. I, that's I why. It's, it, you know. So we're going to have to use something, you know, um, you know, like the Black Widow mm -hmm. <laughs> or um, probably not the vertical antenna, some type of wire antenna. Um, right. Maybe, uh, maybe if I can get something with open feed line put together in time, it's might, yeah. not be an, might be an option too. So, yeah, I don't think I got much. Uh, I don't think I got much 450 left. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I know someone who does. You, I know someone you know who does. Um, but you just <laughs> got to drive up north to go get it. Uh huh. And, and deal with all the cats. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, so, who, you know who I'm talking about. I think he's got three or four hundred feet of it sitting around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I got some. I got some parts. I can build some let um open line too. So. Oh, six hundred ohm. Four hundred fifty. No, I was just going to do the four hundred fifty ohm. Okay. Um, but I could, I could probably, I can three D print spreaders. If I start now, I might have enough spreaders by the time field day starts. <laughs> I think I think if you're gonna pay for the three D printed ones, I just go buy them off Amazon for fifty cents. <laughs> I'm back. All right, you got your you got your problem solved. So uh, I don't we're know just about talk- solved. <laughs> we were just talking about antennas or finishing up the antennas and then um, uh, power. So um, power oh. for field day, and I know that. Well, you've you've got your solar set up, Travis. To keep it's the camper doing running very well. It's doing very, very well. Um, I've got the 400 watt array down by the boat landing that's generating upwards of 16 to 1800 watts a day by itself. And then I've got the 120 watt briefcase that does another mm-hmm. five to 600 by itself. So I might just run off the camper's battery. You might, ne- you might not need to use the generator to charge anything up. So No, no. I mean, if it's 90 I, I degrees, you're going to use the AC in the camper. Well, yes. <laughs> In which case, then I'll have to run off my little battery and just charge it off of something. I'll charge it off the briefcase. There you go. So, and if we get a couple, yeah, if we can get a couple larger LiPo batteries out there too, it shouldn't be yeah. so much of an issue. So, I'm um, so, yeah, talking I... about. Yeah, uh, talk, we we're talking about the woofer for coil. The Sporty 40 will handle 75 watts digital. So it's, I uh, wouldn't run 75 for very long. No, on that. no. Especially not on a field day. Uh-uh. Not on yeah. field day. You're going you're gonna to nuke that. That's going to look field. like Three Mile Island. <laughs> I was going to say, how about, I, I don't think I'd go more than 25. I do 30. I do 30, no problem. So. Right. I think 30, 30, 40 would probably be ma- max. We'll have to we'll have to try it. We'll see what we'll see what we can do with the uh, um, push. You know, we've got a couple you, you weeks. Do it with yours. Field days, so. <laughs> do it with yours, not mine. <laughs> you can move your the, your Wolf River coil. Oh, the platinum the platinum will handle seventy five. So right, yeah. I I don't know. It's going to look like a Dr. Seuss book if you uh, <laughs> if you run that for very long. But we got trees, so we wouldn't even need to use a coil if we wanted 40 meter digital. We could just um, run 31 feet of wire straight up and uh, have yeah. a quarter wave uh, 40 meter antenna. <coughs> that might with, be an option your, too. With your chicken wire underneath it. Yeah, with the chicken wire <laughs> underneath it. So <laughs> the park service is going to love you guys. They really are. <laughs> they already do. Why do you think they want me back every year? Because no one else will do it. <laughs> no one else. <laughs> sit there in front of those, sit there with awesome. all those mosquitoes. <laughs> Actually, they're chewing the heck out of my feet because I didn't spray my feet. No. <laughs> you know, you could just put shoes on too, you know. Why? I'm at camp. Shoes are optional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, hopefully pants are mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see that low. Well, so, you got up a couple of times. I hate to tell you. <laughs> we thought your profession was a plumber. <laughs> well, so if anybody, so if anybody uh, in the chat's got field day questions, feel free to drop them. You know, we'll um, we'll work we'll work through those. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's I know. Was it last year? What did we use last year? We were out at we were out at Black Lake, and you had your. Um, you had your Wolf River right. coil, the vertical setup, and, and I was you using. Used, you used the. Uh, you started the with the tactical thing. Yeah. And then you went to your off center fed. The off center fed I dipole. Stayed, mm-hmm. I think I stayed on the Wolf River coil the whole time. I don't think I switched to the doublet. Okay. Because I didn't have my end fed yet. Okay. I'll so have. That... I'll have my end fed with me. We can put it up. That's one of the two I was thinking about. Um. 
favorite field day food. Ooh. Hey, Ooh, we're not to hey. that topic yet. We're not to that topic <laughs> yet. Um, I'll have my Wolf River coil. Like you said, it'd be easy enough to build a 40-meter vertical. We've got trees that are over that tall. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you build that Black Widow, that would be, that'd be good. I don't know. We got time to figure that out. All the time yeah. in the world. All the time. You no, know, not really. Not not if you got to buy parts. So, <laughs> ah, Michael, we're just gonna get in the time machine. We're gonna go back in time, and we're gonna borrow the uh, elf antenna. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So <laughs> we're just gonna borrow it. No one will notice. <laughs> All right. Favorite field day food? Well, last year I think we had that big steak dinner. So we did. I brought I brought all kinds of beef. Yeah, yeah you cleaned out cleaned out your there. freezer. I, was, I had to work that weekend. And we were talking about maybe a, a solar. Uh, we were talking about maybe running my smoker off the camper and you know doing a brisket or something. We should do that. Just smoke something all day long. I like that. Yeah. Well, then you'll have all the campers at your campsite. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you want what do you want, Michael? Do you want brisket or pulled pork? Because I can do either one. I've got plenty of both. Oh, I think let's I've do got, a bris- I think I've got two briskets, and I'm pretty sure I've got a pulled pork. Okay. I, or a couple of pork roasts, pork rumps. Was it field day a th- two years ago that we tried doing pizzas on the pizza oven at the campsite? We do not speak about that because Michael's <laughs> dough was entirely too wet. <laughs> we, we, we've got, oh, we've got like that, that figured out so. no that was let's, yours <laughs> let's do the <laughs> let's do that let's do the brisket this year i think that would be good i don't think i'll go. dive into the freezer and make sure i have one when i get home next okay i'm yeah, pretty sure i do make sure it's thought out yeah yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> the problem with brisket is usually I get up at about three in the morning to start it. Mm. And you're not up at three in the morning? Depends on whether or not the dogs are jumping all over me. Look well, at all the mosquitoes yes. that want to be on camera. You can see them on the camera. It's crazy. I know. So you're going to have that fixed by the end of the month, aren't you? I'm working on it. That's <laughs> what the lawnmower back there is for. My Keep site swatting. hasn't been mowed in over a week. Keep swatting. <laughs> Actually, probably about a month. The grass is pretty long. And yeah. besides, it's you know going to be ninety degrees, and actually, it'll be raining, so we definitely won't need to worry about mosquitoes because they'll all be hiding from the rain. That's right. It always rains during field day. So. But as soon as it ends, they come right back out and they come. They attack in force. Mm-hmm. Yes. So a uh, big question is, does Joe use FT8 on field day? You know what so. grinds my gears? People <laughs> think I use FT8. I tried it once. Fell asleep at the radio. <laughs> Woke up the next morning, worked all states. That's why I don't use FT8. <laughs> you don't have a need uh, to anymore. <laughs> no, I no, no I, I really don't. I'm not. I mean, I stare at a computer enough in life, you know, doing something recreation like radio, I really don't need to stare at a radio, a, a computer a it's, screen it's anymore. So. Stare at a screen. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. That's I, fair. I, like, I know I, guys, I like, like, they'll use a repeater, they're all doing, they're all hunting, and they'll use the repeater to talk about what they're seeing and, you know, and on, and I'm like, oh, well, this one's in this, you know, location, this one's in this grid square, and I'm like, eh, that doesn't do it for me. You know, yeah. So, no, I get I, it. I, I'm old fashioned. What what I what I like about it, to be perfectly honest, is if I had a fire going right now, I could have my laptop sitting on a stump, and I could be conversing with Stephanie and the kids, and still be playing radio. It allows me to do my hobby and still be involved with the family. Well, See, that's go. the thing. I play radio to get away from the family. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm trying to include my family in the hobby. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to do that. Worst so last, field day thunderstorm. Yeah. There was a mighty wind. <laughs> the mighty wind. <laughs> so you know, talk about you know chatting with people last. So last Saturday, it was a sun. Last Saturday, we were, I was in Eau Claire. I had lunch with Dave, um, KZ9V, and um, we had, we just set up afterwards. We just set up at um, Phoenix Park downtown. 
uh, ran FT8 for a couple hours and just sat there in the park and talked. So it was it was really nice to to be able to do that and uh, get a couple get a couple parks on the air. Mm -hmm. It's recreational, you know. <laughs> I'm not Real say, I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm just saying. Oh. You know, okay, mighty wind, mighty wind. We got a story for Scott here. He wants to know yeah, the worst the field wind. day thunderstorm. I'm going All on right, this one. So, this is you too. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll I'll start it out. So, <laughs> so this was, I can't this even was tell about, this story without laughing. <laughs> this was about ten years ago. Um, I think 2012, 2013, maybe Something thereabouts. Like that. Thereabouts, about ten. It was about give or give or take. Uh, and we had we were set up in a public park. And in in town ish here. Um, so um, and we borrowed a couple of these big um, carport shelters from a local Boy Scout troop. And uh, we got everything all set up and it was a hot day and it was a very it was a really windy day. It was probably the winds were gusting, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour. So which was not a were, problem. We had that. Which wasn't was secure. Yeah, everything. Yeah, we had everything. We had everything guide down, um, guide down nice Thanks, in the in, in the leading edge of the wind that kept on coming, you know, from I don't know what it was. It must have been coming from the um, south or oh, something. What was that? Was it, I think that was south, southwest, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. From the southwest or something like that. Um, and we were good. It was beautiful. It was a nice, beautiful, sunny day. Started to started to cloud up overnight. <coughs> And um, I think it was about ten or ten thirty at night or so. Um, we, we lit up some bug killers. Yeah, we were sitting there working. I was I was working I was working phone, and I had these big noise canceling headphones on, and I couldn't hear a stinking thing. Um, evidently, I don't know. The easiest way to kind of explain it is that the um, there was a line of thunderstorms coming, and they were fast that none moving. None of us noticed. That none of none us of noticed. None of us noticed because we weren't really paying attention to the radar because we weren't expecting this to happen. But it built up fast and it was moving fast. And we got a gust front the opposite direction while everything just sort of let loose out of the sky. And these carports that were guide on one side flipped all the way over. <laughs> <laughs> it just rolled right Took over. a couple of tables with it because we bungeed the <laughs> tables to it, too, yeah. to help hold it down. Tables, tables and radios and computers and cables and wire, and it's raining buckets and buckets and buckets, and the power supplies are standing in pools of water, and somebody's yelling, kill the generator, kill the generator, and everything goes dark. <laughs> Thankfully, we did have a permanent structure that, I mean, we, we opened a trailer. We just started chucking everything into yeah. it. But yeah. there was a mighty wind followed by a mighty wind. buckets of water. This was not caused by chili, folks, okay? Just no, no, no. This, no, this was... was not This was not Michael's cooking. <laughs> so if you go to wvraclub.org, the Wisconsin oh. Valley Radio Association, if you look in the photo section from about 10 years ago, the aftermath is documented. Uh, I yes, about ra that. Radios We're... at awkward angles so everything can drain out, fans, fans blowing covers up. taken <laughs> off, power supplies. All the equipment survived. All the yes. equipment survived, but yes, everything. Man, a mess. Are they Even here? that Raspberry Pi that I had uh, set up for our blogging server was survived, and that thing was just strapped to a dish. I think well, the... the Raspberry Pi, I mean, even, you know, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, right? <laughs> right, but it survived. It did. It oh, did. the photo links are all dead. Oh, when did that all happen? Oh, someone needs to fix that. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. Shoot, I can't pull them up. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> wow. Well, the webmaster has That's... a new project. Uh, let's see. Can I find it on Bookface? No, yeah, unless you can. It might be. It might be there. I bet you it is. If you can, if you can. Uh... It was hilarious. That's all I can say. Get let's back that far. Photos of the WVRA. And 
Let's work our way back in time here. As I don't I'm think, the, I think the only thing that we lost um, was Other than our the, dignity? Yeah. Like two that. Were the two carports, so... And actually, those I don't think were damaged. They went flying, but I don't think they were damaged. Here it is. Here's it. Here we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Can I do this? I'm going to send it to you via Facebook, Michael. Okay, because I'm not... Here. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. And no, nope. why is this not showing? I sent you a link to a picture in Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get the, the. Let me see if we can get this. Ah, uh, yes, the term tight catastrophe was used too. A what catastrophe? A kite catastrophe. Oh my lord! Because the carports turned into a kite. Yeah, well, that's certainly what it looks like there. I think we still yeah. use those cables for a few more years until I finally so. we decided to burn them. We got rid of them. Yeah, we. They I, I can't find the mic picture mic you're talking mic. about here. Do you want me to go to present real quick? I got it. Okay, there it is. There we go. There's the carnage. The mighty wind. <laughs> the mighty wind. <laughs> so now, every year for field day, we always nominate someone to be the official weather spotter. Yep. Yes. Just saying. So that, Scott, is the... We'll pull this up. Worst field day thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> the mighty wind the, what was the, fun, the, what made it really funny was jerry wasn't there when this happened he came in the next morning and behind the, behind the person taking this picture was a shelter that was attached to the park that we had access to and yeah. everything was laid out in there and he walked in and looked at it and said, what happened? And Michael said, there was a wind. There was a, a wind. A mighty wind. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the ancients talk about it, the mighty wind. <laughs> the same wind that drowned the, the Edmund Fitzgerald, I, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> but it came, it, it, came up as, as, it came up as fast as it, or it left as fast as it came up. Because it was just that big... 40 some mile an hour gust front that that just came through wiped everything out we had buckets of rain for about a half hour and then if that if that so everything was drenched and oh man what a what a mess yeah we had to we had to we had to try to sort and clean everything up by headlights um i think i think it took us about two hours and yeah. uh, we just said yeah we're, we're done for the night <laughs> I, just, I, I, could, I, I just I remember you I, I remember Jerry coming in and looking at the carnage like what the hell happened and you just went there was a wind a wind <laughs> a mighty wind we were wrestling bears Jerry what do you yeah. think happened <laughs> <laughs> oh it, it was, was it was hilarious. bad so <laughs> but it was hilarious too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so that's so yeah, field day with us is always a always like an experience. Something's gonna happen. <laughs> yes. What happened last year other than it rained? Well we had that, yeah, we had a freak thunderstorm that time too. I remember throwing blankets and down on top bugs, of radios. And I think bugs but, tried to carry you away. Oh yeah, it was buggy. It was buggy. It wasn't. It wasn't. Thankfully, it wasn't unbearably hot. Um, no, but I uh, just had kept the fire going all day, and that helped keep them under control. I mean, if I built one right now, they'd probably go away. Yeah, but we yeah we had definitely yeah we had that mid afternoon thunderstorm that kind of dampened our spirits for a little bit, but um, dampened, dampened. We've had other years. We've had hail. Um, 
Didn't we have a tornado was, warning one year? I think we did. I think there was one year. Yeah, everybody went out and spotted for a couple hours, so we had to shut everything yeah. down as, as there was nobody around. And uh, so it's invariably something's going to happen. One year <laughs> yes. they launched the Yagi into space. Oh this yeah, this year Joe's oh, yeah. going to Taylor Swift. No, no, I am not going. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> You could say something about it, but I'm not even going. But anyways, yeah, there was, <laughs> there was an unfortunate incident with the Yagi and a pneumatic mast. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes, where we launched. <laughs> <laughs> they got stuck and just... And then, poof. Well, so you got the, the got to go to the backstory. So we that was... Um, our, our club has got one of these pneumatic masts off of a uh, television uh, microwave truck. We just mm -hmm. have we don't have the truck. We just have the mast, and we'd strap it down onto a flatbed trailer, and everything was great. Um, so, you know, we get the ma we get everything rigged up on the on this pneumatic mast, uh, six meter beam. I think we I don't know if we stacked the no we didn't we, we just had the six meter beam on it. it. Yeah, we just we just had the stack the twenty with it. Well, usually we usually will stack six. Two meter and then four forty, but I think we got lazy this year and own. Oh, you're right. The twenty meters usually on the 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 Rhone. Yeah, that's on the other tower. Uh, or maybe we did have them all. I think no, we did have we did have we did stack the um, six meter and a two meter. So it was all rigged and ready to go, and would just inflate it. Uh, but uh, we couldn't find the rotor control cable. It was missing. So I said, "Well, that's I." In, in my infinite wisdom, I said, oh, we'll just um, we'll just leave the mass loose inside the um, inside the rotor and um, tie a rope and we'll just kind of swivel it around Armstrong style. We'll Armstrong it. <laughs> you know, that sounds like a great idea. That'll work just fine. So, uh, so we start to inflate the mast and it's climbing and it's climbing and it's climbing and it's climbing. And remember earlier in the um, in the show, we were talking about lubrication for extendable whips. <laughs> well, <laughs> the seals were gunked yeah, up, we so a section we were, a, were unlubed. One of the sections <laughs> started to bind, and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting, and pressure starting to build in this mast. And I says, and, and and I say to the guy standing next to me, I says, "Don't worry, it'll 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 break, it'll pop and break itself free." Well, it popped and broke itself free. And the force pro, um, project propelled, uh, um, propelled the, the, the six and Launched. two meter antenna up another three feet, and then it came <laughs> straight back down and crashed into this guy's flatbed trailer. Punched a hole. It, it like had a this. hole in it. <laughs> Thankfully, again, no one got hurt. Nobody got hurt, and we were at a. I think we were at a scout camp too. So there was kids <laughs> around, <laughs> and the kids, and the, and the, and the kids, <laughs> yeah, the kids are cheering. They're yelling, "Do it again! Do it again!" <laughs> <laughs> and the poor six meter is a five element beam. It's like it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> Not always in his body, you know. So, oh man, I think we got it. We got it fixed. It's 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 working. So yeah, we've we, used that. We've we used that antenna. We just flipped several... it the other way and launched it again. Yeah, we've used it for several field days since. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm out of focus again. So, okay, there Hold we on, go. Back to mime school. Oh. Yep, back to mime school. So, see, I moved my head too much, and the camera lost focus. So, <laughs> so nothing's nothing's grinding Joe's gears. But you got two, you got two wildly awesome field day stories. So. Oh, don't ever say nothing's grinding my gears, but you know. Uh huh. Would it be? Would it be the initials? <laughs> What's that, Travis? <laughs> Would it be the initials TS? TS. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, it's it's okay. I, I'm over. I'm over it. My wife needs to go have fun too, right? That's right. <clears throat> I suppose. 
You know, I, I go do things, she goes do things, you know, everyone's got to be happy. The mom ain't happy, no one happy, right? Right, right. But, you know what really grinds my gears? Mm-hmm. Play it, Michael. Hold <laughs> oh, uh, on. Oh, you know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> it's it's the Alpha Hotels again, boys and girls. You know the lids, <laughs> not not just your everyday lids, the special ones, the special ones. Because we've talked about this before. People make mistakes. We well, get that. You know, mistakes we learn from, right? We <laughs> so you step up, you step in on a net. Whoops, sorry, my bad. I'll leave. <laughs> Then there's the guys that are a little cocky on the air. Okay, I get it. That's that's their thing. But then there's this guy out in California who's facing a $25,000 fine because he thought it would be best to play music over a net on HF. Right? I, I think I've, I've probably hit this more than once before in the past, but I'm going to do it again. You spend all this money on radios, on gear, on antennas. You get a license, and then you're going to go be a tool? Yep. You're going to go be a tool. This is what you're going to do. Your claim to fame is you're going to play music and cow noises and everything else that some of these idiots do on 7200. Again, stop. No one cares. Beavis and Butthead got a better stick than you guys do, okay? There you go. Right. Like I mean, yeah, Beavis and Butthead are gone. If you watch the new episodes, they're actually pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beavis and Butthead have a higher IQ than you, Jack Wagons. Okay? <laughs> we'll stop. Go sell crazy someplace else because we're all stored up here. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm just done with the Alpha Hotel. And you know what Alpha Hotel stands for? This is the family show, and I will not use profanity, usually. But um, that's, that's what's going on in my gears. Another one of these Jack Wagon shows up, and just get them off the air. No, and you see them. But I, I assume the, the volunteer monitors probably had a little bit of a do in this one. Um, I, I'm looking for the... Um, for the news story about it, the press release. Uh, but yeah, he was tracked down. Someone got in front of his house and he was on um, 3805 or whatever the net was on. There got, we go. There we go. Radio so, World. RadioWorld.com. No, the FCC. Damn operator. Uh, oh, sorry. $74,000. Yeah. 24. 24. 24. Still. $24,000. Yeah, I'm, sure I'm sure that guy doesn't have it. Right? No. Yeah, most Sam's don't have 24 grand just laying around. Because they want to be a DB with it and just throw it away. Right? So why? Why is this guy doing it? You know, Philip, what's his name? Philip Bode? I don't know. Bode. He sounds like a bidet to me. But um, yeah, again, just go away. Go away. He's, go. Got, he's got 30 days to pay. So yeah. Or to yeah. say why you can't pay. Well, mm-hmm. you know, you know, most of these guys don't even respond. So like if if you like just blow it off too. They just tack on more fines. And then you end up in uh, federal administrative courts. And that ain't going to be good, too, because the FCC starts putting liens on your house, on everything else. And you're going to pay it one way or the other, buddy. Yeah. You yep. can't win. Nope. Yep. You, don't make, you can't make your, well, it's freedom of speech. It's not because ham radio is a privilege. So just suck it up and stop being the DB. Mm-hmm. Grinds my gears. Well, hopefully they've cracked down on this one. They can start working their way through some of the other um, malcontents on the yeah. band. All they need yeah. to do is go to seventy two hundred. Well, and I they're working on them. They're working on them. And again, it's so when you get to like some of those things like seventy two hundred, there's just so many of them. Sometimes hard to pick them out, right? I guess the one you haven't heard a long time is Captain Dave. He's, I think he got shut down, and there's some other ones too that get shut down. But you know, stupid retracts stupid, right? Yeah, you that know, is true. Just mm-hmm. go, let's go to a political rally. Stupid attracts stupid, right? 
And, see, I didn't say what's political sign. I just said it in general. No, you didn't. You so, behaved yourself. You know, so now everyone wants to go to seven. Remember for a while, it was 14313, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was you know, that's that was a frequency to stay with. And 7200, I think 7200 is starting to die down. I haven't heard much on there lately. But always remember, and um, remember, every radio ever invented has a special feature that filters all them idiots out. It's the big dial in the middle. Just the big the dial. Camera. There you go. Just tune away. Tune it away. Yeah, I think you're down on 80 meters, 3860, 3865 usually had a bunch. 3913. No. Yeah. 3913, just a bunch of local boys up north. Yeah. Yeah. They go, Good old oh. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Never doing no harm. So, yeah, I'm unfortunate. Running, I'm running 1,500 watts. At, what am I only? I'm only 20 over. <laughs> right. And you're you're what like 30 miles away, and you're talking. You're using you know full, full, full 1,500 watts. Come on. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I know one of them lives what maybe 15, 20 miles from me. Shh. Don't let them know that you're up there. That, that, right. that group's kind of really toned down because I think a couple of them passed away over the last few years. So yeah, so. yeah, that's the other thing too. Sometimes, sometimes nature just takes its course. It just takes it takes care of itself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it's Darwinism. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we um, better stop here before we really go down and get dark and dark and nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. So, man, Travis doesn't have any more blood left to give. So, <laughs> thank you guys for coming in this evening. This was a good show. We talked a lot about field day and hopefully gave some some people some ideas on. Um, what you can do for your own uh, field day station and what not to do. Um, if there's if you a... value your equipment, don't come where we are. Yeah, ab <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> We're either going to we'll launch be... it or soak it. So, or so one of the two, something's going to happen. So exactly. that's, that's what always makes it fun. So uh, next live streams coming up, oh man, Thursday, July 6th. So it's um, after field day, after the holidays, um, oh, yeah, our fireworks extravaganza. Yeah, middle middle of summer. It'll, that'll be the middle of summer, so we don't want to. But we don't want to talk about that for sure. Uh, no. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, joining us. I'm Michael KB9 VBR. <laughs> I'm Joe KD9 CJX, and I'm Travis W9 HDG. Yeah, I'll have a, a great um, evening and a good start to the weekend in 7-3. 73. 73.